Ah, Daytona, Florida in August. It's like walking through a hot pot of seafood soup out here. Ugh, so much condensation. Or eat, or eat, or eat, or eat, or eat, or eat. There, that's no better. I'm here for the National Reptile Breeders Expo, and you know, it's been a few years since I've been to this expo, but this is the Reptile Expo that 32 years ago kind of started it all and proved that a large-scale reptile expo could actually work. And because of its success, it inspired the majority of reptile expos that are happening all over the world today. So I'm going in to tour the 2021 Daytona National Reptile Breeders Expo, and I am gonna dish out a whole new batch of Rattle On Awards. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, guys, so the doors have just opened. This expo is just getting started. This expo has the most diverse selection of reptiles and amphibians that I've ever seen at an expo. Usually you see tons of crested geckos and gargoyle geckos and ball pythons, which are awesome. But here, there are tons of different colubrids, tons of different tortoises, tons of different ball pythons, but there is something for everybody here. So what's your name? My name's Whitney. Whitney, okay, and what did you get there? Okay, so he is a red Nigerian Euromastix. So now, is this your first Euromastix? Yes, it is. Excellent, all right, well, you enjoy so your Euromastix, that's Thank great. Thank you so much, it was a pleasure meeting you. Good meeting you. Uh, what's your name? Zach. Zach, all right, Zach, great shirt, <laughs> but even better snake. Look what you've got there. This is an emerald tree bow female. She is a feisty one. See, that snake loves Almost you, that me. was a kiss. <laughs> My name is Brian. Brian? And where are you from? I'm from Puerto Rico. From Puerto Rico, yes, okay. I'm actually planning a trip down to Puerto Rico here oh, very soon. It. I know, I know. I love it. And uh, what did you get there? This is a matrix male blood python. This is head 14 negative. Very nice, yes. very nice. Are blood pythons your thing or do you just kind of love them? Uh, my things are blood pythons and boas, but the albino stuff. But okay, I gotcha, uh, I, I gotcha. I love the albinos. I also uh, love the ball pythons. Pretty much every snake. All right, so this is Isabella. What did you get here at this I expo? I got an IMG boa. IMGs are my favorite boas. And so for a lot of people that don't know, IMGs start out kind of normal colored, and then they get and darker, darker and darker and darker, darker until yeah. they are the most awesome boa in the world. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is Lucas. Show me what you got here. So I got a black tail Kribo. Oh, Super excited. Oh, man, we got to take him out and see yeah. him and then an adult male spotted python. Love the spotted. So is this your first Kribo? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's fantastic. What a good looking snake. Now, Thank you. you are aware that they do finger paint with their poop. Okay, all right. <laughs> so what's your name? Brittany. Brittany. Matt. And Matt, and what did we get here? I got a female leopard. That is a nice looking leopard, wow. Nice pattern on that one, and what do we got over here? A female yellow belly. And a female yellow belly. Look at those flames. Man, those are good looking ball pythons. I wanted to say real quick, uh, if it wasn't for like watching your videos and uh, Emily owns Snake Discovery and Clint, I would have never gotten to the hobby, so. That is uh, awesome. a big impact. All right, so what's your name? Uh, Willem. Willem, and you know, we were talking before I turned the camera on, you're from Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. That is very cool, there's boas native there, so yeah. what did you get here? Um, I got two of these uh, tamal, how do you say Tamalipas. it? Tamalipas cloud forest uh, boas. Tamalipas cloud forest boas, Mil wow. Yeah, pair. All right, so we popped him out there. That is a good looking boa. And he got this from Vin Russo. Yeah, the legend. That is great. Well, you got Vin's book, you got your boas, yeah. you're on your way, that is great. So right. speaking of Vin Russo, what's new and exciting uh, going on in your world? Well, you know me, I'm always working on making things better and redder and more patterns. So I've been working on making my blood bow is redder. Look at those. Man, those are awesome. 
Well, the original Blood Bowers originated from um, Ron St. Pierre. Yep. Um, and they were from Bowers from El Salvador. He went through a, a pile of wild caught, you know, bags of wild caught babies. Right. And he found a few of these red looking snakes. That was in the early 90s. Or I should say almost mid. Oh, yeah, early yeah, 90s. Yeah, about early 90s, yeah, yeah. as I remember, yeah. And uh, so I've been working with them ever since, trying to get them redder and redder. and breeding the reddest ones to each other. This year I bred one into an IMG, well Whoa. last year, so I made an IMG head for blood. So we're working on trying to make a blood IMG. Um, that is gonna be smoking. Yeah, that should be smoking, yeah. assistance there buddy there you go there's a little assistance for you all right guys so comment below is that the greatest name for a ball python company or the worst comment below and then look at this look at this t-shirt don't google it <laughs> that is pretty epic there grandpa <laughs> thank you <laughs> all right so i just got word that just over here there is a one-of-a-kind world's first crested gecko that i need to check out all right so this is Catherine from manatee sun coast lizards that is the greatest sign you got neon and I everything love it. i love it years ago i hatched out a first six antics so this is my line and they're not from the european line these are apple pie these are mine and your own line of axanthic. Yeah, my own line of all right, all out of right. the blues, like hitting the lottery. Yeah, absolutely. Like hitting the lottery. So this is years in the making. So with the plain exantics, I bred them to the lily whites, and then we get I call them Lucy Grace, but it's two genes. It's the lily white co-dominant gene and then the recessive exantic gene. Gotcha. And this is what they look like when they're grown. And this now, is boss, this is a male, and they're just gorgeous. It's a lily white exantic, and I just nicknamed them Lucy Grace because I was the first one to hatch them out. Look at that. Yeah, they're just gorgeous. So we're looking at a world's first here, a xanthic lily white. Yes. Now that's almost an adult. So oh, this is, is this now. is a project this, that's a, how, how now, old? I'm breeding him now. He was two years old in July. So this is a couple year old project. Yes, oh yeah, well the actual project is about five years old. Gotcha, all yeah, right, yeah, yeah. all right. But the Azanthic Lily White project oh, is a new. couple that's of years new. old. Yeah, yeah, that's new. That that's is new. fantastic. Well, congratulations. So everybody watching this is gonna wanna know if you were to sell this guy. Oh, I can't. I've been offered 30,000. You've been offered 30,000. And I didn't take it, no. Wow. No, these, these are like one of a kind now. Absolutely. And this is ready to breed, so yeah. Wow, 30,000 and you turned it down. Well, this is the first time I've been on the ship before it sailed. Hey, right, so. right. You know, I, I can't say that I wouldn't turn it down either. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Wow, congratulations. That is an amazing crested gecko. Well, thank you, thank you. Mr. Bob Vu from Bob's Balls. What's going on, guys? Um, want to show some animals? I want to see the coolest stuff that you've got at your table. I mean, you've got this whole end cap here. Well, let's see the coolest. Let's see the coolest stuff. This animal just sold, but let's show her off anyways, because she is super, super nice. Right here, we have a black pewter confusion clown. Pots, oh, 100% het for a hypo. Such a powerhouse animal. Even without the, hy the visual hypo, she's super cool. So 
That is amazing. You know, it's so funny because when Spot Nose first came out, everybody looked at it and was like, I don't get it. Right. And then we put it to Clown, and, and then it, it was like, up. right, up, exactly. Right. Every gene has its own potential, like the red stripe. Right. Uh, no one really cared too much about red stripes. Right. It was on like 50 bucks a piece. Right. And then Red Stripe Clown came out with the Pompeii, and we sold out of red stripes instantly that day. Right. Like, as soon as the video hits. Right. So I think every gene has that potential, and you just got to find the right combinations for it. Exactly. All right. So everybody knows I'm into pides. Let's see one of your best pides that okay. we've got here. So Orange Dream and pides, I think, were just kind of made for each other. Yes, they were. So this is Orange Dream Pinstripe Yellow Belly Pied. Wow. You see how much is the orange just slowly comes up there. The pixelation from the yellow belly. From the yellow belly, right. right. It just really showed up well. Wow. Really like this animal. Kind of that dirty pattern in the saddles right. from the pin. From the pin. That is a good looking animal. You know, I think that Orange Dream Pides are probably one of the most beautiful ball python morphs that are out there. I'm not saying that just because I produce a lot of them. And, uh, but seriously. I mean, the orange dream and the pie just, it really makes that orange just pop. Really pop out. Yeah, absolutely. I think the hottest project currently on the market is Desert Ghost. Um, so here is a spot nose, fire, Desert Ghost, possible head for clown. We were just discussing this. Pos heads prove out all the time, every time. You know, it's kind of an unfortunate name to call that Desert Ghost right. because of the deserts right. that... You know, for those who don't know, the females did not lay fertile eggs or didn't lay at all. Right. And so I would have stayed away from calling anything desert after that, but... You know what? Amazingly, uh, it's been years, years and years before after the desert thing, and people still ask me. Absolutely. Why would you sell a female that can't lay eggs? That's and I'm right. like, ah, oh, it's not the same ones. But, I mean, now we're just going to shorten it down, call it DG, and just avoid the word desert, right? I, I agree with that 100%. Okay. Well, Bob, you know, I see you at all the expos, and you have some of the best ball pythons in the industry, man. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that so much. Absolutely. All right. Have a good show, man. I Thanks. Dave Kaufman, welcome to Tiki's Geckos. All right, so uh, obviously we've filmed together numerous times. I, mean, I don't remember you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I went through your stuff when you weren't around. <laughs> but anyway, uh, show us like the coolest stuff that Tiki's Geckos is doing right now. I mean, it's always going to be the new Caledonian geckos, crested geckos. Let me pull out something nice for y'all. Yeah. This boy right here, he's my favorite. Come on, little buddy. Look at that, dude. This is the best of the best when it comes to crested geckos, in my opinion, Lily Whites. Now, for everybody out there that uh, wants to get into Lily Whites, kind of explain why you can't breed a Lily White to a Lily White. So a Lily White to a Lily White will cause, like a lot of the eggs won't survive. And even if they do hatch, it'll produce like a leucistic animal, all white, but it's a, it's a fatal gene. Right. They don't make it. Um, even if you get it to hatch, and most of the time, I think they've only ever been able to cut the eggs and get the baby out, and then they still die. And then they die. Exactly. So, so they only a, live for like a couple hours, not even a yeah, day. Yeah, if that. If yeah. you get lucky, that's getting lucky, because most of the time, they don't get that far. Right. So that's why you can't do lily white to lily white. But the great thing about lily white gene, it's co-dominant. Right. So you compare this one male to... 10 females, half of their baby's gonna be lily white, half are not. Exactly, so you don't need to breed lily white to lily white. Exactly, you'll make enough babies just with one lily white male. Exactly. You guys produce the best geckos. I get a lot of geckos from you. Always love coming down and filming with you guys. But can I just say how happy I am? Not at all of your success, not at, that you, look at this, have the busiest table here at Daytona but that you're growing your hair out. <laughs> I'm trying to be like Dave. That is I'm just to be like absolutely Dave. fantastic. A couple more months to a year, we're gonna be brothers. Oh yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right guys, so that is some of the awesome reptiles and amphibians that you guys are gonna see here at the Daytona Reptile Expo. But now, it is time to dole out the 2021 Daytona Reptile Expo Rattle On Awards. All right guys, so when it comes time to give out the Rattle On Awards for the best lizard here, I'm at CM Exotics booth and look what I I have found here 
This is a spotted blue-tailed monitor. These guys are so amazing. So as babies, these guys have really high contrast, black with yellow spots, but look at that tail, and that's where they get their name, blue-tailed spotted monitors. Their tails are really blue as juveniles like this. So these monitors are from New Guinea, and they are in the same group of monitors as like mangrove monitors or peach throat monitors, and these guys make really rewarding pets. However, they do get wiry. This guy's really calm, but they do make nervous pets, and therefore, you have to have a cage that's big enough for these guys, not only as babies, but as adults, and UV lighting is a must for these monitors, and you can get really awesome UV lighting equipment at VivTech. They're a brand new company, and they are the first company to have LED UV lights that are just perfect for these little monitors. There's a little plug, Ryan. Can I have my money now? But this is what they look like as adults. They get a little bit bigger than this, but unfortunately, when they get to be adults, they don't keep that bright blue tail that they have as babies. And like I said, these are very nervous lizards. They're not very handleable, but these are just really awesome monitor lizards, and you can see why this is my pick for the 2021 Daytona Reptile Expo Rattle On Awards for the best lizard here. So have a look at this amazing tortoise. This is a hypo redfoot tortoise. And you know, I don't know that I've seen a ton of hypo redfoot tortoises, but there's a lot here. But out of all the ones that are here, the ones that are here at Kim and Mark Bell's table, these are the prettiest hypo redfoots that I've seen at this expo. Man, these are such unique tortoises and really common pet tortoises. But I'll tell you, these are South American tortoises. They live in the South American rainforest. So here in Florida, these guys do really well in outdoor pens or even indoor pens. If you live in Florida, you should really have these in outdoor pens. Up in the northern regions of the world, these guys just don't fare very well. They live and they thrive but not as well as they would in an environment like here in Florida. But just have a look at how amazingly beautiful this tortoise is. That hypo really brings out the reds and takes an otherwise dark to black tortoise and just gives it that really nice caramel color. So you can see why out of all the Chelonians that are at this expo, I'm giving this hypo redfoot tortoise the 2021 Daytona National Reptile Breeders Expo Rattle On Award for the best Chelonian here. So when it comes to the Rattle On Awards for the best snake here, I'm at Wild Things, Don't poop, don't poop. <laughs> I'm at Wild Things Exotic Animals, and this is a Mellendorf's rat snake. These are also called 100 flower snakes. These are also called remove my sunglasses snakes. Don't get your butt out of my face. As I was saying, this is a Mellendorf's rat snake. They are also called 100 flower rat snake. And these are native to China, south into Vietnam. They kind of have a small range, but these are just incredibly beautiful rat snakes. And one of the things that I love so much about these snakes is that red head. And these snakes are born with that red head and they retain that red head into adulthood. But look at the pattern on this snake. They have such a really cool spotted rat snake-like body. And another really awesome feature about these snakes is their tail. Look at how cool and red that tail is. So, like I said, these are also called 100 flower snakes. I have never been able to figure out why these are called 100 flower snakes. So if you guys know where they get their name, 100 flower snakes, comment below, because I'm really interested to know. I've done a lot of research still have not been able to figure out where they get the name 100 flower snakes. Get out of my, get your butt out of my face. What is your fascination with putting your butt on my face? But in herpticulture, these guys are still relatively rare colubrids. Not a lot of people are working with these guys, 
And that's why this is my pick for the 2021 Daytona Reptile Breeders Expo Rattle On Awards for the best snake here. All right, all y'all, that is the end of the 2021 Daytona Reptile Breeders Expo. This is a really awesome expo, and it's been going on for 32 years. Man, that's a long time to have a continuously running reptile expo. Wayne has done an incredible job with this show. And again, guys, almost every single reptile expo that you guys either vend or go to is inspired by Wayne and what he has done here. So anyway, guys, I just real quick want to thank all of my Patreon supporters. It's with your help that I can continue to educate people about these incredible animals. If you would like to become a Patreon, please check the links in the description below. And guys, there's lots more reptile adventures coming up. So until the next adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.